to the home that they share with another friend or with a battering ram. Sieg Heil! The roommates were allegedly ordered to the ground with rifles as an officer instructed one of his accomplices that if you want them to be quiet, just do them like this, and proceeded to slam Kotzlecki to the ground using his foot to stomp on his neck and his head. The female officer, who was holding Tamani at gunpoint, reportedly followed suit and did the same to him. I'll tell you one thing you can do. You can uh, hook your computers up to um, uh, any of a million free webcam recording devices and record your home at all times. And if you were to get a break in like this, you would have it on film. If you shut your monitor off, they'll never know they were being filmed, which is legal to do in your own home, by the way. The men allege that an officer asked them how they were able to pay the rent of such an expensive home, seemingly the only explanation as to why these men were targeted. In other words, uh, because you don't look like you should live in this neighborhood, you must be selling drugs or you couldn't afford to live here. Sieg Heil. The roommates also have music studios set up and home artists or free people are coming and going frequently. In other words to record there and I know don't argue with me on this I've done this my whole life it's, it's not open for debate this is how it is you pay a recording studio by the hour which I have done nauseatingly many times in my life thankfully my brother and I now own our own studio free shout out DJ Aram um you buy it by the hour so if a rapper buys a beat from a producer. The producer will say, all right, for X amount of dollars, here is the song. Which, when it's a beat, yo, it's actually the whole song. Here's your song that you're going to rap over, yo. And I'll sell you two hours of studio time for 40 bucks. So the guy gives him 40 bucks, comes over, spends his two hours, gets his tracks done, and leaves, and saves to do it again. That's how people that own studios make money that would imply that people are coming and going at all hours of the day and night whenever they set up a studio a lot of people like me enjoy using studios in private uh, residences because this, this is going on at 5 or 3 in the morning I have these hours and I sometimes choose people who own studios that will accommodate these kinds of hours Again, I'm speaking hypothetically because we have a studio now, but you know what I mean. It's not unusual for people to be coming and going frequently. It says there were reportedly no explanation given to the young men about why they had been under surveillance or why they were being raided. The officers even failed to provide a copy of the search warrant to the men at the time of the raid. A document obtained from the police by Porter reportedly states that the warrant was not presented because there was no one home when the police entered the house, which was not true, Kansas Exposed reported, so it was a lie. Sig Heil. Porter further explains that after trashing the home, the only thing that the officers managed to find was an old broken piece of a wear water pipe, man. When Timoni and Kutzlecki arrived home after being detained, the house was completely trashed and a warrant was sitting on the kitchen counter. In what looked like an almost deliberate move to cause damage, a scarf was left on top of a knocked over he he space heater and had begun to burn. It was truly lucky that we were released and arrived home in time to catch before the whole place burned down and all their belongings went up in flames. From disfiguring a toddler to throwing a flash grenade, we reported on all of that. We know what no-knock raids leave to, lead to. Here's just another example of the grotesque abuse of power that we're seeing on a regular basis. And friends, that brings us to not one but two dum dee dum dee dum dee dum dees of the day. Uh, Dunce Cap of the Month also coming this month, uh, uh, this week I should say. Uh, I've got a lot to do this week, but I will be working on it. Fukushima, Dum Dee's, and the April Fool Show. It is possible that either Dum Dee or Fukushima will be moved to Monday, but we'll see as time goes here. Six-year-old child is suspended for making gun shape with hand. 
Friends, we have gone too far. We have taken this whole zero tolerance insanity way too far. The latest case, zero tolerance madness, has occurred in Colorado Springs as a first grader has been suspended from school for pointing his fingers in the shape of a gun. It's a familiar tale as Elijah Thurston became just another in a long list of children to be punished for innocent imaginary play. The boy allegedly made the gun shape with his hand and said, you're dead, while pointing at another child in the class, which of course killed him outright. Uh, no. Elijah was given a one-day suspension for threats against peers and was forced to undergo a lecture from a school administrator at Stratton Meadows Elementary School regarding what it means to be dead. In other words, they traumatized the poor kid. That's a parent's job. The re-education also consisted of ensuring that Elijah no longer confuses make-believe or things in games with reality, according to KRDO News. The incident could be permanently logged onto the boy's behavior record. How many of you like the violent femmes? This will be recorded in your private records. Uh, anyone? Violent femmes? Yes, leave it in the comment lines. Um, first of all, there's nothing to say that the child ever confused real dead with imaginary dead. There's nothing that implies that he didn't know outright that the guy wasn't really going to die. That the kid wasn't really going to die. So to imply that he needed taught the difference is to imply that he didn't know the difference. He did know the difference, very likely. It says, I know we have zero tolerance, but more of a maybe no recess, his dad and Austin Thurston said. Going as far as a one-day suspension and is a little extreme. Friends, this has been a little extreme since the end of the George Bush pregnancy, uh, presidency. Pregnancy gave birth to an alien. A presidency. This has been way beyond reality for so long that if you can't see why this won the first of two dumb Ds of the day, then you, in fact, are part of the problem. Uh, the last of the two dumb Ds, Paul Joseph Watson, the feminists accuse clothing company of fat shaming over baby onesie. Now, please know before you say, Sam, you're fat shaming. No, I'm not, because I think I'm fat too. It's not about whether or not you're shaming somebody into losing weight. The point is that fat people can always stand to benefit in a healthy way from losing weight. I probably would spend a lot less time falling down the hill if I myself would lose weight. Am I obese? No. Am I fat? No. Am I chubby? Oh, yeah, I'm a little chubby. Yeah, all right, fat. Fair enough. Irate feminists have accused a clothing company of fat shaming babies over the onesie outfit, which features the words, I hate my thighs, asserting that the message is detrimental to the baby's body image. Because we all know that, you know, babies, when they're not reading their clothing, are busy reading the writings of Dostoevsky. Miss Magazine editor Michelle Court, whose article on the subject, Link, drew attention to this apparently vital cause, wrote, quote, We feminists do have a sense of humor, but really, there's nothing icky about projecting fat awareness on babies. Well, that would imply that you do, in fact, not have a sense of humor. It says, oh, well, never mind, I, gave, I, I blew his horn. No, Michelle, you don't have a sense of humor, writes PJ Dub. And neither do the perpetually offended, joyless feminist harpies that collapsed in hysteria over this. Court is apparently unaware of the basic fact that babies can't read and would have absolutely no idea what the text on the onesie meant, meaning it would be impossible to feel fat shamed. Not that they would even begin to grasp the concept of fat shaming to begin with. Um, it's true. I, know, I saw some, like, Islamic hatred written. You know what? I didn't know what it said. 
However, an NBC poll today, Lake, found that 56% of viewers thought that the onesie was offensive, with just 41% considering it to be cute. This is the world that is paved for the death that is Hillary Clinton. Rybaby, the company that produced the outfit, initially pulled the item after the controversy began, but then put it back up, thank God, on their website alongside another version which read, I love my leg rolls. Uh, by the way, I support Rybaby, W-R-Y-B-A-B-Y. I now support them as of this moment. It says, why? Because they hate feminism, and so do I, that's why. Uh, third wave feminism, to be clear. It says it wasn't good enough for Court, who persisted with her insanity, remarking, Sorry that we don't see much difference between I hate my thighs and I love my leg rolls. The subject of the latter is that someone would not love their leg rolls. But of course, we're making too much of this, right? You won't have leg rolls if you eat less junk food, you fat freaking cow! How's that? I hope I offended you because I could eat a few less chocolate rolls my fat ass self. So bring it on. Rye Baby refused to back down, thank God, despite court's attempt to whip up a phony outrage campaign. We couldn't agree more about body image, the company wrote. That's why we made an ironic joke about it. Obviously, no baby would or should hate their thighs. We're glad that you're able to froth up your readers this week and shine the light on what is apparently a vital mission for your Miss Magazine. Reviewing Baby's Clothes. Yes, I love that they gave them the one finger salute and told them how to eat it. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. Sam I. B. Ganji, signing off. You can donate to the show at thecorrectviews at hotmail.com. Every penny you give to me goes towards a better show. Go to themediaspeaks.com, look up the work of Kyle Court D. Lake and myself. And friends, above all else, thank you for listening. Good night, and God bless.